we need to estimate imperfect square roots, and the first thing I would uh, encourage a person to do is just to make a regular number line starting at zero and have it go up to maybe five or something like that. Um, that'll be enough to get you to, to start understanding how the, the basic structure of this number line works out. Now, once you've got the basic number line set, go to each number on the number line and times the number by itself. So zero times zero is zero and put a radical sign over that product. So the square root of zero is found at zero on a number line. One times one is one. Put a radical sign over that. Radical one is found at one. Two times two is four. And you get the idea pretty quickly. Now, these are perfect square roots, perfect radicals. And we're not really interested in that. We want to find out how we can estimate imperfect square roots to the nearest integer. But if we take the time to see how a number line is put together with perfect and imperfect square roots, it can make that a lot easier. Um, let's, let's just kind of focus here on the distance between 1 and 2. It's the square root of 1, or radical 1. This would be radical 4. So if I count it up by radicals, this would be radical 1, radical 2, and radical 3. So is the radical 2 closer to 1, or is it closer to 2? And we can see that it's absolutely closer to 1. Okay? Now, if I change that and I said, hey, uh, what about the radical 3? Is, is radical 3 closer to 1 or 2? Uh, we'd see that radical 3 is absolutely closer to the number 2 on the number line. Now, the spacing on these imperfect radicals, they are spaced out evenly the same way that the distance between these integers are. See how 0 and 1 and 2 and 3, they're all pretty much pretty evenly spaced, even though I, I hand drew that. Um, so the square root of 2 should have about the same amount of space uh, between the square root of 1 and the square root of 3. And the square root of 3 should have you know equal distance between the other two radicals on either side of it. See this distance from here to here is about the same as the distance from here to here. And it's not perfect. Again, this is hand-drawn, but that's the, the basic idea. Now, instead of looking at um, that one, let's take a look at um, the square root of 7. You know, where is the, the square root of 7 going to be at? And let's see here. So is it closer to 2 or 3? And we'll zoom in on this number line so that way we can actually see it. Now, if this is square root of 4 and this is the square root of 9. The square root of 7 is somewhere in between there. But... Again, the, the difference is that we want to do this even spacing. And what I recommend is, is that you start on the left side with your, your lower radical, your lower perfect square root, and then start counting up just like you know, normally would on a number line with radicals. Radical 4, radical 5, radical 6. Try to keep the spacing about the same. Radical 7, radical 8, and radical 9. And because I didn't already have, you know, 3 written over here. I didn't have to expand it all the way over here. The square root of 9 is 3. And now I can see where radical 7 is at. And um, there's two ways you can do it. Here's the halfway point, roughly. And it looks like square root of 7 is a little bit closer to 3. Or you could say, well, if you're counting up, you've only got to go up by 2. If you're counting down, 1, 2, Three, you got to go down by three to get to the nearest um, perfect radical that's below it. So we can see that it's closer to three. Same thing's happening uh, with all the other imperfect square roots. You just find uh, where it, it, it lays in between two perfect square roots, and then it gets a lot easier. But um, I'm going to do one more. The thing that you have to recognize is, what about if we said the square root of, oh, let's just do 83. Is it closer to 9 or 10? And what I'm hoping to get you to see is that you don't have to do the whole number line, but you do have to find this perfect square root. So 9 times 9 
is 81. So we'll say radical 81 is found at 9. And then just start counting up. So is radical 83 closer to 9 or 10? Here's 82. Here's 83. And as you can see, it's going to take some time to build up to radical 100, which would be a 10. But I don't need to go that far. I just need to get a clear understanding of is radical 83 closer to 9 or is it closer to 10, which wouldn't even show on this screen. And uh, obviously the answer would be 9. So that's the beginning of estimating imperfect square roots, and that's just trying to round to the nearest whole number, which which whole number is it closest to. And um, later, within the next couple of lessons, we'll show you how to actually take the skill and let it help you be able to round to the nearest tenth or hundredth without a calculator.